it's good fun, you know. It should be like that. I'm, I'm a firm believer that lean should be fun, you know. You should keep it lighthearted and fun. Over the last few weeks, we've heard how lean's being applied outside of the U.S. And today, we're going to continue this trend by learning how lean is being applied in the UAE as we visit with Dan Whitaker. Now, as you'll hear, Dan is originally from the UK, but has lived and worked in the UAE for several years. Now, on today's show, we'll learn how a country that's only 47 years old has taken to lean, and we'll also hear how Dan and his colleagues have realized great results by keeping an open mind and having a ton of fun along the way. Now, show notes for this episode, which will include links to everything Dan and I discuss, can be found over at GembaPodcast.com. Just look for episode 226. You can also check out Gemba Academy's Lean Learning System over at GembaAcademy.com with a fully functional trial. Now, let's get to the show. All right, Dan, welcome to the show. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me on, Ron. It's great to hear, uh, actually talk to you rather than listen to all the videos and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. That's great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the videos. <laughs> no problem. Hopefully, hopefully it's helpful. So, uh, yeah, it is. All right. Well, hey, um, so you have a, an interesting accent, So, uh, but I, I don't believe that you're in London or something like that, right? So uh, no. wait, wait, tell us, uh, well, first of all, where are you calling it from, Dan? Oh, well, I'm actually calling in from Abu Dhabi at the moment. Uh, I've been out here for seven years now. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. It's uh, a lot different to home, a lot hotter. I was going to say, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably not as much rain, and, you know, <laughs> right? No, I think uh, I think we get like rain every, once a year, I think. Oh, wow, wow. 20 minutes and everyone goes crazy for it. So. Right, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I do have to ask you, so we're, we're actually doing this interview on July 11th right now, and... Uh, it's a pretty big day for uh, your home country, I guess, right? With uh, the semifinals yeah. of the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, it's a big day. When I uh, planned this meeting with you, I didn't really expect us to get this far. I was like, oh, I may need to change this appointment. <laughs> well, I, I, you, we had a few hours before uh, before it kicks yeah. off, so you'll be okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll be done yeah. by then. So, well, um, looking forward to it. I hope we do okay. I just hope the young lads they go for it. it seems like a different mentality this year. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been fun to watch them. So I guess I, yeah. I, I don't really... I don't care either way, but I think it would be fun to see England and, and France battle it out. So, uh, boy, that yeah. would be it's some kind of a rivalry there, I guess, right? So, Yeah, definitely. It'd be great. I think you've got half of our old English footballers over there anyway. I think David Beckham's there starting a football team as well. Well, it's just when they all retire and they want to go have fun, they come to America, you know. And it's not serious anymore. They just go play a little yeah. soccer, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Good stuff. All right. Well, hey uh, – Let's uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about your background, Dan, and and then maybe uh, be curious sure. to learn how you uh, how you came to to wind up where you're at now and and what you're up yeah. to these days. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I've been all over the place, really. I mean, I left school uh, reasonably early. I left school when I was 17 and uh, sort of just went out uh, working and uh, fell into quite a tough job making uh, car moldings, plastic moldings, and um, yeah, it was interesting, and I, I learned that. Well, they paid me by what I produced. So I thought, well, it seems like a good opportunity to make some money here. And uh, so I was pumping these uh, plastic moldings out for cars, mm -hmm. only, to f only to find out that later on they were inspected and half of them failed and I didn't get paid very much money at all. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, I was like, I think this is where it all started, really. I, I sort of said to the supervisor at the time, well, why didn't somebody check that a little bit earlier before I made a mistake, you know? Mm. And uh, that got me thinking. And uh, from there, I was just trying to obviously make sure that I followed the uh, standards properly that were given to me rather than rush ahead and just think about the money. It was uh, more important to get it right first time than uh, just think about the money, you know. Mm -hmm. So from there, they um, they were good with me. They uh, very patient and um, they saw that I was interested in uh, making things easier for myself and other people. And uh, we took a trip over to France of all places. <laughs> mm. And um, there was a, one of the top manufacturing companies over there in Lean. They gave a presentation, and uh, I was just blown away by it. It was actually Yamaha, hmm. and uh, they were doing uh, scooters, and they had a production line there of over a thousand machines, and they had one forklift inside this facility. I just, wow. you know, I just couldn't believe, it. just couldn't believe it. It was very, very slick, and uh, it was just something that I wanted to be part of, really. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, ever since then, I've always sort of, even when I haven't been fully involved in lean or whatever I've done I've tried to make sure that I help people and uh, find an easier way to do things mm -hmm. 
So from there, I um, I moved on obviously in life and uh, different circles, and we've got a lot of Formula One teams in this country, in in England, and uh, I got a job at McLaren. Mm. So I was working for McLaren, and uh, again doing some lean stuff along the way because it was uh, it's obviously run by at the time it was Mercedes, so it was German engineering, so they're they're good with their lean anyway. And um, just progressed on from there. And of all places, I ended up at Ferrari for uh, five years. So wow. that was really, that was really interesting. It was kind of like the pinnacle as a as a young boy that was into cars and motor, motorcycles to to be in the heart of Italy with Ducati and Ferrari around you. It was great. So what was that like as far as like a lean culture or, or maybe, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I was, I was actually involved in the Formula One team rather than the car side. But every day we went to lunch, we had to walk through the car facility and uh, you could see all the automation and uh, the cranes that came down from the ceiling that held the car body and they rolled it over for people. And it was like, uh, it was just fully automated. You know, it's fantastic to see. I mean, we can do it in Formula One, and uh, we did it to some degree. Obviously, cost was very important to them. They didn't want to waste a lot of money because those carbon fibers expensive and all that sort of stuff. So we did quite a lot of lean initiatives with uh, cutting of carbon fiber on the machines, making sure there was uh, the utilization of the materials and things like that weren't going to waste. And they even developed something at the end there where they were shredding the excess carbon and making high performance brake discs from the off cuts so they actually had zero waste on our left which is amazing hmm. you know now obviously we, the folks in the, the lean world you know when we learn about quick changeover or a smed you know we, we always watch the famous some some formula one pit crew you know going hmm. going crazy and and, and yeah. how orchestrated they are um yeah did you ever see or were you ever involved in in how they practice that and how they how they fine-tune that process um, the only time I saw it happening was when I went come back home. I came back and I worked, went to work for Williams, and it was a very small family business. And I remember they had a dummy Formula One car that it literally two guys were pushing. Mm. Uh, and they pushed it in. They changed. I mean, it's so fast now. What is it, like 1.2 seconds or yeah. something? It was crazy without the fuel. And it's just ridiculous, you know, the the speed of that wrench that they're using and the accuracy they have. It's um, They could do it with their – they literally practiced. It was like um, – you know, Carter is like uh, they're uh, they're blindfolded and they just put the thing on, pull it off, put it on, put it off. It was just it was just muscle memory. It's yeah, just incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've seen your videos. I think there was a clip in one one of them where it's a, you likened it to a Formula One crew. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, all right. Well, after Formula One, then I guess the, it, did you uh, go on to uh, to Strata? Yeah, well, I went back home uh, and went to work for an aerospace company in England, and um, I met up with a guy. This is kind of how my life worked, really. I just met people and got talking to people, and we sort of moved around together. And the guy that I was working with in the UK was coming to Abu Dhabi, and I wished him well, and then he phoned me up about three or four months later and said they're looking for a um, supervisor, and uh, they want to get into lean and stuff, and they'd be interested to meet you. So they flew me over here, and... Uh, Showed me the big city lights of Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and uh, here we are, seven years later. Wow! <laughs> Still here. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's been it's been great. It's been a real, uh, real privilege, really, to be over and see such a young country come up and be so interested in this sort of culture. And that it's been really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, tell us about Strata. What, what what's the company do? Yeah, right. So Strata's, um, they make uh, aircraft parts, uh, composite aircraft parts for Etihad and Emirates Airlines. And uh, they're, they're doing things for Airbus and Boeing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're building the huge um, flap track fairings that go underneath the wings, the things that kind of look like missiles, but yeah. they hold the flap in position. So they're huge components and it's a state of the art facility um, built and designed in the UAE, built from the ground up and uh, they had a plan over here to um, get 60% emeritization, so to get the locals into work and learn these kind of things and uh, brought us guys over here to teach them. Mm -hmm. And with the help of you guys, obviously, and uh, with the videos and things like that, we're, yeah. we're doing a good job. I mean, that's been great. So t so talk a little bit. Now, you came from England, and, and I'm, obviously mm. you've been around the world as well, and you've seen you've seen how difficult it can be to get kind of lean to take to take hold in really any, mm. any company or culture. Um, mm. but then you go to, uh, a country that, what is it? 47 years old or something like that. I don't know yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, uh, how, you know, what, what, <laughs> how is it different? You know, are they more open to, uh, to these ideas or, uh, you know, talk about that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's been the nice thing. I kind of tease my wife. The country's the same age as my wife, which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's one of the things we joke about. But, um, yeah, it's it's been completely refreshing, to be honest, and it's been uh, one of the most enjoyable places that I've done, Lean, because there's no um, preconceived ideas, you know. It's just completely blank canvas. Um, it came about when one of the uh, chairmen went over to Tokyo to meet a client and uh, met up with some guys from Toyota and... Uh, they actually met up with some people from Shingojitsu, who, mm. you know, as, you, as you know, were you know the pioneers of the TPS yeah. system. So I remember the meeting came around, and they said to me, "Have you heard of these guys?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course, everybody's heard of these guys, you know." And uh, they said, "Well, we're thinking about bringing them in on a on a contract uh, to come across and do some workshops and coaching, actually, in our factory, and we'd like to send." Uh, 10 groups of 10 people over to Japan over the space of two years, which is just a, you know, just a sensational opportunity for me and for all the MRIs. So um, off we went to Japan and uh, did some training over there with Toyota, Hitachi and GE with Shingojitsu. And we actually met my, <laughs> met Mr. Nakao as well. So mm, it was very quite, cool. Quite an honor. Even my sensei that came over here, Ken Sagawa, he was quite emotional when he met Nakao, you know, it just means so much to them. It's hard to believe how how that you know it, you talk about culture and when you see these guys react to somebody the way they do you know it's just complete respect and uh, for what these people you know do they change they change everything for people you know it's it's the way they live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i saw uh, i saw japan in the world cup this year i saw an article about how the fans cleaned up the stadium after they yeah. left I, th I thought that was just incredible you know you talk about a culture well there you have it <laughs> yeah no, exactly. You can't, you can't teach that kind of thing, right? That's just uh, that's bred in from when you're a very young age. Everybody's doing the same thing, and it's respect for each other and uh, the places that you visit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So talk, look, talk a little bit about, about Lean and Kaizen at Strata. Like, sure. How are you guys going about it? Um, well, it's, uh, there's a small team. There's myself and uh, two guys that work for me as KPO champions, and uh, we go around and we do mini workshops. Um, but we're trying to encourage. Uh, when when we we're in Japan, we saw each cell had their own KPO guy, um, which is great if you're in Japan because you have that culture anyway, and it's easy to pick. But in the UAE, we're still trying to coach and mentor people. Um, you know, through your videos, just on basic things like 5S and, you know, we're slowly, slowly getting there with shadow boards, getting away, getting rid of toolboxes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it, it's a slow process, but it is, right? I mean, it just goes on forever. You know, it's not something that you can just snap your fingers and it's just going to be done. So, um, yeah, we've done quite a lot of work with, um, I know the Japanese, when they came to us, they were very keen for us to keep using paper. We developed a CIMS system, uh, trying to bring it forward a little bit where by people can launch ideas into the company portal. Um, we have a system that controls our production called SQCDP, which is Airbus is standard as safety, quality, cost delivery and people. And we also introduced CI to the end of that. So Instead of getting people, uh, when we first launched the system, we were getting people saying, I need a new table for this. Uh, I need uh, I need some new safety shoes. These are not continuous improvement ideas. These are just wants, you know. So we try to control it a little bit through the SQCDP CI system. And uh, in the CI section of that, we have the most wanted problem. So we have like a big uh, John Wayne Wild West type poster there saying most wanted and people are encouraged to submit ideas through that specific focus point, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've done a lot of work with you guys. I mean, uh, we've you know we've got our subscription with you. We do uh, weekly and uh, weekly training sessions on different topics through you through your website. Uh, we're going to work with you guys to take on for the uh, learning management system as well. I've been mm -hmm. speaking to the ladies in that there. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't want to make this a Gemba Academy commercial or anything like that, <laughs> yeah, but, but I am yeah. always curious, and I know we have a lot of Gemba Academy c subscribers mm. listening to this right now as well. Like, like how, how do you guys use our videos? You know, I mean, yeah, is it just like watch a video and walk away, or is there, no, is there, I mean, is there a plan to, to put it into action, or what? Yeah, we, uh, we try and get it's, it's quite difficult because, like, every, everywhere is a little bit different, but um, 
the the locals uh, find it very diff very very difficult to understand my English accent, believe it or not. Even though it's the Queen's <laughs> English, they yeah. find it easier to understand the American accent. So uh, they like they like your videos, and they also like the fact that they can uh, they can replay it and they can go over it again and again until they understand it. Because mm -hmm. it's okay if you sit in a classroom, you teach somebody something once or or twice, they still don't understand it, but they can watch it at their leisure. And we also use your quiz questions and stuff and have a bit of fun with it and that. But yeah, we take it down onto the shop floor. We've been doing some good 5S stuff recently. With, um, we're having a little championship there, kind of like a World Cup style thing where areas go head to head mm -hmm. and they, they, they win the trophy at the end of the World Cup and stuff like that. So yeah, no, we're not, not just uh, we're not just teaching it through uh, classrooms. We're actually down on the gamba trying to uh, make sure these things are put in place and educate people as we go. What we do like about it is the fact that the computer terminal is always there, and if people are not sure, then they can just refer straight back to the videos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's it, it's interesting. Anytime I talk to customers, I uh, what I try to say is that I know it sounds odd. We got thousand some videos or whatever, fifteen hundred videos now. I don't even know how many we have. And uh, mm. but I what I try to get through to folks is that it's not about the videos, right? I mean, mm. that's what mm. you, that's the artifact. It's what you see, yeah. but it's what you do. Right. And I would rather people yeah. watch one video, go watch the, the straighten mm. video in the five S series yeah. and, and then go spend, yeah. you know, three days, you know, doing that. Right. And really taking action. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, like the five S one's a really good one, isn't it? Because the sort and the straighten is the most uh, visual. And yeah. We did one in the, we did one in the office the other day. It was ridiculous. We took out like 300 kilos of waste yeah. from the office, uh, old papers. There was old people's contracts, uh, all sorts of things in there, you know? And, uh, the management, we took some nice photographs and stuff and uh, the management like, you know, just can't, you just don't see it day to day. But yeah. now when you take the before and after pictures, it's quite incredible. Just the small things like that. And people enjoyed it as well. We had some fun with it, you know, and uh, try and keep it light hard as possible. If you take it too seriously, people get upset, especially in an office area, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what kind of, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, it's a young country and people are pretty open, mm. but I'm sure there's still been a little bit of, you know, change management struggle here and there. Talk about, about how you got, how you get through any resistance. Um, the locals have actually been really good. I, I, I don't want to say it. I tend to find it's the expats that are the most resistant to it, I guess, because <laughs> <Okay. 'cause, laughs> they've uh, seen it all before, you know, and uh, some places it's worked and some places it hasn't. And, uh, you know, you get that stigma attached to things like 5S and change and, uh, oh, here comes the Kaizen police and things like that. But it's not about that, you know, it's about making people's lives easier. So, um, we did have one occasion where a lady was very attached to the items in her area and she didn't want to let them go. But we, we kind of worked around that lady and just tried to let her see for herself um, some of the benefits and that. And uh, one of the ladies that works with me, a local lady, is very, uh, very patient and uh, she speaks to her in Arabic and uh, makes sure that she's uh, comfortable and that and she shows her the plus sides and here's her story, and now she's slowly starting to come around to our way of thinking, you know, so it's, mm -hmm. it's good to watch. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I understand that you guys, uh, you know, we, we, we all hear about TPS, the Toyota Production yep. System. I understand you guys call uh, your, your system SBS. Talk about that sure. a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, obviously, yeah, it came from the TPS system, but... Um, uh, there's a standard within uh, Airbus um, whereby there's a manual, uh, they call it the brick system. And we wanted to uh, take on board, it's basically lean principles, but tweak to suit the manufacturing environment that we're in. So, um, yeah, we create a nice little booklet that the employees get when they come into the company and it gives them all the guidelines about TPM and uh, 5S, all the things that we expect as a basic uh, when they come in the company, you know, I give them the uh, the training package as well at the same time on some lean principles and uh, the dangers of all the wastes and things like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's a ni nice little handout as they come in. It's a it's a really well presented little book and it's uh, quite impressive. Really, mm -hmm. it's not just a booklet, you know. It's uh, everyone's got one on their desk and everyone works to it. It's nice. It's good yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you so you we've we've spent some time talking about five uh, uh, S and how you guys have gone about that. But are, are there any other uh, initiatives that you guys are working on? Yeah, uh, we we had a huge problem where um, our factory was uh, where it's brand new. We had uh, one contract that was in a huge facility, and it was everything was very easy. We had two CNC machines, we had three autoclaves, and uh, everything was easy. 
now we have eight or nine programs in there. Nobody thought about how the production system would work and uh, how parts would travel from one department to the other. So uh, we had uh, quite a few problems with the push system, with these huge composite components whereby there was huge buildups of WIMP and uh, inventory and weird and wonderful places things were being stored and parts were getting damaged and you know it wasn't the way we wanted to go so we introduced a nice FIFO system quite a simple system whereby in each area that the parts travel to they have a parking space with a number uh, any part can go there and then a uh, domino is linked to that and they drop this wooden block into a basically a ladder and it just creates order and uh, you know uh, some some flow around the area one of the uh, biggest problems we had actually was people were coming to work at 7 30 in the morning and some people weren't actually doing anything until half past 10 until these supervisors and managers had had their meetings and said right this is what we need to do for the day but you'd already lost like three hours of the day so it's crazy but now with this system, the guys come into work in the morning, they pull the bottom block out with the number on it, they take that part and they start cutting or building that, that part. Very simple idea, but hugely effective for us. So the, so the, FIFO, nice. so the FIFO is, like you said, they're like dominoes, like, like small dominoes? Yeah, they're kind of like 150 millimeter wooden blocks, basically, okay. with um, numbers on. That, are, that correspond to a parking space. So there's a board full of numbers, these wooden blocks. Um, we have like a milk run system where yeah. somebody moves parts from monument to monument. When that guy travels to the next monument, he finds an open parking space, say number 12, goes to the board, picks up block number 12 and drops it into a ladder. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, the blocks obviously just drop to the bottom. We actually, <laughs> we actually what, did What's really the point of the blocks? Why don't you just use the carts? Uh, because these parts are huge, you know, some of these parts are, um, oh, I don't know, uh, six, seven meters long, some parts in there. Mm. So the car, the carts they travel on take up a huge amount of space. Okay. So, uh, they, they park them on, they've got like a bogey trolley that's in, in the area for that specific part. Yeah. So they put it on that part. Very cool. We had to, yeah, it was really interesting. We had a huge, we had a really big area that had a, um, it had like 150 spaces in this quality area, and you can imagine that's a lot of parts. And uh, <laughs> they had segregated this area off into different programs, nine different programs, and um, they were finding when they had a part to go into an area, there was no parking spaces available. But there's plenty of parking spaces, say for an A380 program, but this wasn't an A380 part. So I said to the guys, well, why don't you just forget about the areas, just number 1 to 150. As long as the part fits in that space, it can stay there. And they were like, yeah, but what about the uh, the ladder system where you drop the dominoes? It would be the size of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai or something. You know, it would be huge. Yeah. And I uh, said, oh, we need to figure something out. Anyway, I, I play a bit of golf, and uh, my local golf pro had some uh, old balls there. And I was like, oh, this gives me an idea. So I made like a uh, mousetrap type thing whereby you drop the golf ball. The golf ball's numbered, and it goes down like a chute, you know, like a Happy Gilmore style. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Happy Gilmore style type thing, and it uh, drops into the bottom section. And when you pull the bottom ball out, obviously they start moving down. So it's the same thing, but it's just in a more condensed area. But it looks really cool. I love it. You know what I love about yeah. that? You know, I know you've watched our video, <laughs> Ten Commandments of Continuous yeah. Improvement, and one of those commandments yeah. is use your wits over your wallet, right? And uh, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. and it, you you wouldn't believe the amount of attention it draws when customers come around. They're like, "What's that thing there?" And they're like, mm. "Oh, that's our that's our mouse trap." <laughs> and nice. uh, everyone loves everyone loves it. It gets on Snapchat and Instagram and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very it's cool. cool. Yeah. It's good fun, you know. It should be like that. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that lean should be fun. You know, you should keep it lighthearted and fun. Yeah, for sure. So, now, what about yeah. like? Um, so we've got FIFO systems, but do you have uh, outside of that? Do you is it more of a push environment? Do you pull? How do how do you do that? Yeah, so that was uh, the next, the continuation of the FIFO system, really. We tried to switch from a push system because it wasn't working for us. And uh, we introduced some supermarkets. And uh, now we have a nice uh, pull system whereby um, the assembly area uh, pull from a supermarket of basically black carbon fiber parts. And then it's a standard supermarket system. It's run on Kanban. As soon as a part is released, it's triggered in the system. And then it automatically generates a work order to the start of the process where the raw material is formed into 
the carbon fiber is formed into the shape of the part we want. So yeah, it's working really nicely and it's really, you know, our inventory level's gone down hugely and mm -hmm. uh, parts are moving so much faster. The lead time's gone down. It's great. So what kind of, uh, what kind of benefits have you guys realized just, uh, you know, uh, compare yourselves today to where you were, oh, I don't know, a year, two years, three years ago. Um, hmm. What kind of benefits have you realized as a result of all this activity? Well, I mean, the, the, just the working environment is so much better to work in for people. It's clean, it's tidy. Uh, you can see what you've got to do next. There's, there's very minimal amount of instructions there anymore, whereas it used to be kind of a, you know, who shouts the loudest gets their part. There's a, there's a process behind everything. You know, we have a standard that we work to. So, uh, we have, you know, we're doing really well. well we, we had a, we had a nice idea of, there's a VIP system in the UAE, you know, like at the theme, theme parks where you get a fast pass if you want to go on the attraction yeah. early. Yeah. So obviously there are problems in the production line and uh, there's some emergencies sometimes if an aircraft needs a part urgently. So we took care of that with a fast pass system. So we issue tickets to the planning department where they get 15, 15 free rides <laughs> every month. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it works quite well and it helps those guys out as well, which is the uh, the main uh, objective behind it all is to make sure that everyone's uh, able to do their job as easy as possible. Well, it sounds like you guys are having a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, we are. We have, a, we have a good bit of fun every day. We had some good fun today as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, I know you've watched some of our Gimba Academy live uh, videos. It sounds like me and Greg and the guys got to jump on a plane and, and uh, fly, fly on over and uh, spend a few days and, 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 and be more, feature, more feature more. you guys. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I mean, we watched the, uh, the 5S has been a big one for us lately because uh, the office area want to get in on the act because they keep seeing the production areas winning all these uh, trophies. And yeah. uh, we've got WWE belts that people are winning and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and uh, now the, it was really nice, actually. The, one of the engineering managers came to me and said, look, I need in on this action. How do I do it? And uh, I gave him the uh, login details and stuff to your site. I said, look, watch a few of these videos first and I'll come back and see you next week. And yeah. he, was, he was completely hooked. You know, he said, you know, value stream maps and stuff. He said, I didn't really understand the importance of it all before. But now, you know, I really want to do this. I really want to make it part of what we do. Here. So that's, that's great. You need people like that in that sort of area. Engineering managers, it has to be driven by those guys. You know, I'm just a one man band. I have no authority over every, anybody. So, yeah. Now I need their help. So that's good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All <laughs> right. Well, um, let's go ahead and, and, and transition into the uh, into the reflection section, Dan. I got definitely got a sure. few questions I want to run past you. So, you know, you've got you've, you, you talked about early on in the episode, you know, young 17 year old lad going out and kind of yep. finding your way a little bit. I'm curious if you could go back in time right now today, Dan of today, and go back and spend, you know, an afternoon with that young 17 year old mm. and, you could <laughs> gi and you could give him some advice. Yeah. What would you say? Uh, well, it'd definitely be like just to be more patient and relax. You know, I was, uh, I was an only child of no brothers or sisters. So I was very used to getting my own way. I was quite a sort of strong willed character in my younger days and uh through kaizen and seeing how the japanese work and things i've learned to be very patient with people and uh like you just said to me you know how do you how do the locals deal with change and stuff you have to be patient here because they just you know it takes a little while for them to understand they've never seen anything like this before mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah no definitely just to be relaxed and uh, stay patient with people yeah where do you mm -hmm. where do you think lean is going? I'm going to ask this in a two two ways. Where do you think mm. the lean movement is going overall? Let's call it with within the whole the world at large. And that, but mm. then and 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 your particular part of the world where you are right now. Where where do you think lean is going? Well, I mean, everybody's interested in making money now, right? So the costs are just spiraling, and uh, people need to make things faster, cheaper, and better. And uh, everybody. Lean, no matter how many years go by, it always seems to be the buzzword, right? Everybody talks about it. Everybody sees it. It's very visual and it's very simple when you get to know how to do it. Um, I, I only, you know, I, everything I see around here in the UAE, you know, you can see elements of lean in it. It's, it's just, it's incredible to watch, you know, the way they put the buildings up in Dubai, you know, the place is just goes from nothing every time i go down there there's a new road i'm like there must be some crazy logistics behind this somewhere and you know, i'd love to see how all that sort of side of it works but yeah i think everybody's taken on board lean they have to these days mm -hmm. it's part mm -hmm. of it 
Now, with that said, is there is there an area of lean, uh, maybe just an aspect of the of the methodology or the philosophy of lean that you struggle with? Maybe you wonder if it even really works. Uh, it's a tricky one. Um, I know when the Japanese came over, it was uh, it was all value stream maps, and uh, I'm really interested in the value stream map concept, but. I, even all the places that I've been to, I've never actually seen one on a wall and somebody working with one on a wall. Hmm. And it's still something to this day that baffles me. You know, I, I can I can build them, but and I can see how they work. But when, like in our company, when a new program comes in, I'd like to see a a team of people that are on, inboard in that program. It should be those guys that go to the company it's coming from and then do the value stream up there and bring it to our company. You know. It shouldn't be me that's doing all the uh, the value streaming. It should be the engineers. You know, it's important for them to understand it, not for me to understand it. So that side of it, I've really struggled with. You know, even mm-hmm. the guys that come from Airbus and that, they always ask, "Where's your value stream map?" And, but I've mm-hmm. never actually seen seen that working yeah. full fledged. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, gosh, I have to look up the the number, but we've had Brandon Brown. Well, he's been on a number of times, but uh, he came on most recently, kind of talking about you know he's big into this Toyota Kata and and mm. uh, and about how they're starting to use things like value stream maps to um, maybe not in the traditional sense, but really to you know one of the aspects of that Kata methodology is to deeply understand the current state, right? And and so yeah. that when they get to that second step you know, current Mm. condition that they sometimes they'll do a little two or three day blitz to kind of map out to deeply understand material and information flow. But what they're really Mm. trying to do is it's part of the whole Kata methodology, right? Just to understand where they're at. And then they'll set that target condition and then carry Mm. on like normal. So I think it's interesting, you know, how, how these tools over the years can be used in a number of ways, right? They don't have to be the way I think you've even, you know, even if got Mike Rother on here and asking about, you know, he wrote the book, learning to see, right. Mm. You know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And how this, uh, how this idea has morphed and evolved over the years. I think it's, uh, it's really good. I think you're right. I think it just depends on the environment that you're in. You can tweak it to do whatever you want it to do, you know, but, um, uh, in our company, particularly we bring legacy programs in. So it would just be nice when the program is coming in to see the times, this, you know, the cycle times, uh, uh, how many people were doing it? You know, I'd just like to see it all in front of me right at the start. It make it make everybody's life a lot easier. Yeah. You know, so this come this coming year, I want to try and make sure that I get into the we call it the IPT team and uh, try and get some KPO uh, backing on that side of things at our company. Yeah. Sure. Beautiful. Hey, what the what's the best advice you've ever received? Uh, the best advice. Um, or some really good advice, you know. I'm mean, gonna say best is so extreme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, my favorite one is uh, the, the go go see for yourself, Genshi Gambet, Gambetsu. Mm-hmm. Um, just get down there, get in amongst it, and uh, not just from the fact that you want to watch. You know, it's good to interact with people and understand what everybody's problems are because everybody's different. You know. Uh, different abilities and things like that. I've actually got a desk that I made from Creeform that's got wheels on the bottom of it so I can just wheel it around and nice. uh, sit there and watch people and work at the same time. So when we're doing like time studies and stuff like that, it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, def- definitely, uh, you know, in this day and age, I think people spend too much time in front of the computer and uh, not actually where the, the magic happens as such. So just yep. get down there and have a look. Yep. Hey, last question. What, what, sure. what, is there a knowledge or, or skill area that you feel you need? I know you mentioned value stream mapping, but maybe something mm. else besides that that you want to uh, maybe get better at and, and learn more about over this next year? And if so, what's your plan? I was really interested. To, again, I don't want to turn this into a commercial for yourselves, but uh, the Carter stuff that's just popped up there, yeah. I was interested in that. That's a really nice piece. And yeah. uh, I'm going to do some studying on that. It really, looks really interesting. Yeah. And there's a few people over here that have studied martial arts and stuff, so they understand like Carter and yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, now I'm going to try and get some of that into the uh, engineers. And, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, hey, Dan, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you got pre-game uh, <laughs> work to do here as English gets ready for their big match here, so I don't want yeah. to keep you too long. But, uh, but hey, thanks for coming on. And uh, let's wrap things up, Dan, with you sharing some final words of uh, wisdom and then uh, definitely tell folks how they can connect with you. 
Sure. Uh, if anyone wants to connect with us and see what we're up to, we have Instagram and Twitter. It's uh, Strata UAE. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn at Dan Whitaker. If anyone wants to talk about lean and stuff like that, no problem at all. Uh, words of wisdom. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just, I can't emphasize enough about like standards and uh, making sure that uh, I was going to talk a little bit about um, uh, Joseph Duran's comment there. Without a standard, there's no logical basis for decision making or action taking. Mm. We use that. We use that a lot at Strata through the SQCDP, and we don't make any change until we're confident, 100% confident, especially being aircraft components that um, people are working the way they should be working. And uh, they're following those uh, standards religiously. And there's no point in making any change until you know that for sure. You know. Mm-hmm. So I was interested to read a little bit about him uh, just recently, how the Japanese were interested in his quality control handbook. Uh, it was quite, quite amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone, ev- everyone, uh, everyone thinks the Japanese bought all this Kaizen stuff around. But uh, I think it's Teichi Ono that said without a Without standards, there can be no Kaizen, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so he must have got that from Joseph Duran, I would assume. So. Well, I think everybody gets it from someone, you know, and yeah, <laughs> go, go back to the, the Venice, you know, Arsenal and all this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> I mean, it yeah. goes back way, way long time ago, yeah. right? So, good yeah, stuff. There's a lot of history behind it. But yeah. yeah. As long as it works for everybody, then it's fine. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, hey, uh, do you ever uh, ever get out to any conferences or anything? Dan? Um, hopefully next year we're looking to, to do a few and uh, I've got some friends over there in Texas as well so maybe stop by and see you guys oh, at the same Oh man, time. you need to swing by man. <laughs> you can see where the magic happens. <laughs> yeah. And likewise, if you guys are ever uh, in this neck of the woods then you're more than welcome just uh, contact me and we can uh, arrange sure. something for you to for come sure. and visit us. Sounds like a fan- fantastic vacation spot if nothing else, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean if you've never been before then I've never, well. I've not, no. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, really. Yeah, I, I better not have my wife listen to this episode. She'll be like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. We just had uh, Porsche Design came over a few weeks back, and uh, one of the guys, from, he's actually based in Atlanta for Porsche Design there, and uh, he's obviously German, and he said, it, no, I had so many uh, thoughts and preconceived ideas about Dubai, but it's completely different to what I thought it would be. You know, it's so yeah. you know, Western and... Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, it's a really nice place to come and visit. Good, sure. Good, good, good. All right. Well, thanks again. Take care and, and good luck to uh, to your your English uh, soccer or football <laughs> men. And yeah. I hope they do well and represent you guys well. <laughs> yeah, me too. Hey, thanks to you guys over there as well. You've been a great help to me over here. It's been a godsend having uh, your stuff on board. It's been great. Thanks very much to everyone. Great right. work. Thank you, Dan. Take care. Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate. Thanks for listening to the Gemba Academy podcast. Now, we invite you to take a no-strings-attached, fully functional test drive of GembaAcademy.com. Gain immediate access to more than a 1,000 Lean and Six Sigma learning resources, all free of charge, at GembaAcademy.com.